Hello class and welcome to chapter 11 which is about rational functions and equations. This first section is going to focus on inverse variation which is section 11.1. .1. By the end of today's lesson you'll be able to identify the difference between direct and inverse variation, write inverse variation equations, solve those equations, and graph them. To start, an inverse variation function is a function where the rate of change between x and y is not constant. What that means is this k value is multiplication instead of division. If you remember from direct variation in chapter 3, that is where that k value, that ratio, was a division of y over x. Now with inverse variation, it is a multiplication of y over x. If we were going to be able to graph this function, we would need it in y equals format. So it's going to be y equals k over x, dividing both sides of the equation by x. Down here, recall, with our direct variation, when we, do, we started with y is equal to k times x. So the k was already being multiplied with the x value. Up top here with inverse, k is being divided by x. So in terms of how we determine this, there's a couple different scenarios you'll be presented with, either a table or an equation. We're going to start with the table. In order to decide if it is direct or inverse, we need to look at that multiplication versus division. So you're going to look at this first pair. If it was direct, you would start with y over x, so 3 over 1, and reduce that, which is going to equal 3. If we were looking for inverse, we would start with 1 times 3, which is equal to 3. Then you have to go to the next one to verify which of these two it is. So with the direct, we would go 6 over 2, which equals 3. And with the inverse, we would check and say 2 times 6, which is equal to 12. If you notice, on this particular one, our pattern, our direct is equal, our inverse is not. So this is an example of a direct variation function because we have division is constant as opposed to inverse where multiplication is constant. If we come over to the equation ones, that's referring back to whether or not it's a number is equal to x times y or y is equal to a number times x. So we're going to simplify this get all of our numbers on the same side by dividing by 2. So I have xy is equal to 5. We have x and y being multiplied and equaling a number, so this is an example of an inverse variation equation. Go ahead and determine this one on your own. Because we multiply to get the same values, 1 times 16, 2 times 8, and 4 times 4, it is an inverse variation equation. Next thing we have to do is be able to write these equations. So recall from that first slide that the equation was in the format k is equal to x, y. So we're going to use this information to find k first. It says assume that y varies inversely with x. If y is equal to 18 and x is equal to 2, write the inverse variation equation. So we're going to plug in what we know. We've got k is equal to 2 times 18, which gives us k is equal to 36. That's finding our k value, but what it asks us to do is write the equation. So we need to go back up to this original and say x times y is equal to 36. That is the actual equation that you would be using. Go ahead and try this one on your own. We've got 5 times negative 4, which gives us negative 20, so our equation is x, y is equal to negative 20. After we write the equations, we want to be able to solve them. So again, we're going to start by finding our k value. So in this case, I've got k is equal to 12 times 3, giving me k is equal to 36. Then going ahead and writing my equation, I've got x, y is equal to 36. The actual solving piece comes in when it asks you to find y when x is equal to 4. So we're going to come down here and we're going to plug in x is equal to 4 solving for y, and we still equal 36. To finish this up, we are going to need to solve for y. We do this by dividing by 4 on both sides, giving me a final answer of y is equal to 9. Go ahead and try this one on your own.
Multiplying, negative 8 times 4 is negative 32, so xy is equal to negative 32. Plugging in negative 4 for y, you get negative 4x is equal to negative 32. Solving, you get x is equal to 8. The last thing we need to talk about is how to graph these equations. So again, the first thing you're going to want to do is find that k value. So I'm going to say k is equal to uh, 8 times 3, so k is equal to... 24. That gives me the equation x, y is equal to 24. However, when we put anything on a graph, we want to make sure that it is solved for y. So I'm going to divide both sides by x, and the equation I'm actually going to use to help me graph is y is equal to 24 divided by x. Now normally when I start a table for graphing, I would start at negative 2 and go up to 2. However, in order to complete the inverse variation graph, you are going to need to start with negative 3. So negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So you're going to use that full um, extended set of numbers as opposed to just two to negative 2 to 2. So when I plug in and I do 24 divided by negative 3, I'm going to get negative 8. 24 divided by negative 2 is negative 16. Dividing by negative 1 is negative 24. If you plug 24 divided by 0 into your calculator, you're going to get an error. That is correct because we cannot divide by 0. So 0 is just not included in this graph. Then I've got 24 divided by 1, which is 24. Divided by 2 is 12. And divided by 3 is 8. So now I'm going to have to count by something other than uh, ones to be able to get up to 24. I'm going to go ahead and count by fours to make sure that it fits. So 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, and 40. The same thing would happen going into the negatives. When you are renumbering a graph, you need to make sure you do it consistently on the upper half of the graph and the lower half of the graph so that we are consistent with our scale. So now that we have everything to scale, I'm going to go ahead and start graphing these points. So the first one is negative 3, negative 8. And then I have negative 2, negative 16, and negative 1, negative 24. Now, when I got to 0, that answer was not possible. So what this means is when I graph, we have, we're coming close to zero, but we're not actually going to hit it. Notice, these points look like they're in a straight line right now, but they're actually going to curve. If I kept going with this graph and go, went up to negative 4, 24 divided by negative 4 is negative 6. So my graph actually should have gone a little bit lower because negative 6 is right there. Uh, so this curve is going to be the same that you were looking at for exponential functions. Notice, because I have a 0 here, it didn't touch the 0, and it curved. It continued to curve. Uh, next, we're going to do the positive coordinates. So I've got zero, or excuse me, 1, 24, 2, 16, and 3, 8. Again, it's going to be a curve. We don't want to touch 0, so we're going to keep that graph curving. Go ahead and try this one on your own. k is equal to negative 6. We've got our points on the graph. Again, that 0 gives us an error with the two curves. If you have questions about this or anything else from the lesson, please let me know when you get to class.